what's up guys we're here welcome back to the channel so as you guys saw in the footage we finally got our blue rose and we are slapping with the frozen orb build i'm very very excited about bringing this build to you um and having something different for you guys to play this is the final end game variant that we're going to have for the build and we're going to go over everything that you need for the skills the gear vampiric powers and the paragon board so just a few things uh, just to start this build off, this is a very mana hungry build. We are not running a basic and although this build is not required to have any unique such as remnants or god slayers, I am using them which is going to be like put it over the top. However, the only unique that you 100% need for this build to at least go to the higher nightmare dungeons like you guys saw in the 76 is the blue rose. If you don't have the blue rose, that's okay. You're probably going to be around 50 50 nightmarish dungeons, but I do want to get that out of the way. The only unique that you need is Blue Rose. God Slayers or Remnants you are not required to have, so I'm going to give you show you some options to where you can swap those out if you need to. So first things first, let's go over all the skills here. We're doing Firebolt. Uh, again, we're not running any basic skill. The reason we have Firebolt is because it's our first enchantment slot to cause burning to all of the enemies. Okay? We're going to come down to our core skill, which is our Damage Dealer, which is going to be Frozen Orb into Greater. This is going to what is what is going to allow us to not only make enemies vulnerable, but then frozen orb always makes frozen enemies vulnerable, which is really, really nice because the power that we have is going to cause them to stop and explode. So we're going to pretty much have 100 percent uptime on our uh, vulnerability here with our frozen orb um, skill. Next, we have one in devastation for mana and then three into elemental dominance for the increased damage when we have when we're casting um, a core skill above 50 mana. So the next skill here we have is Potent Warning. The reason I have this is because of my resistances are quite low in this build, um, at least with the uniques. So as soon as I cast, I max out Lightning, and I get pretty close to the other ones, which is pretty good. If you wanted to swap, uh, like, at least the helmet out, for example, or even the chest piece to where you're just rocking straight no uniques here, we do max out a little bit better. We get three. Um... However, that's the reason I have that. Now, I will tell you that you do not have to have this. You don't need it. Um, you could swap these out and put more points into teleport, which will um, just help you cast more teleports. Um, however, I kind of like just potent warding because the build is actually kind of squishy in that sense. But for now, we're going to keep it as is. And then, of course, what is a sorcerer build without every defensive skill in the game? So we're doing uh, flame shield into mystical flame shield. The reason we're doing mystical over shimmering uh, is because we want the mana cost reduction, okay? 25% is a lot on a frozen orb that already costs us 27. So this really helps. However, because the build is really squishy, it is okay to take Shimmering here. Next, we have Teleport as many ranks as you want, especially if you're going to drop them from Potent Warning, into Shimmering for even more damage reduction. One point into Elemental Attunement, so that way on a very rare lucky hit, we reset a defensive skill, which would be really, really good. We max out Glass Cannon for more damage. We got Ice Armor into Enhance just for the mana reduction, but more importantly, the Barrier. This build benefits very much from having a Barrier. You're going to do it way more damage when you have a Barrier active. Then, of course, we got Frost Nova into Mystical for all of the Freezing as well as Vulnerability, which is huge on the build. Next, we got uh, Precision Magic to increase our Lucky Hit Chance, which is important. One point into Align the Elements for Damage Reduction. Two into mana shield for more damage reduction, and then one into protection for a barrier for three seconds, okay? As we're continuing to use the cooldown, as you guys can see, we have five skills here that are all cooldown. Uh, and then with that, on top of just ice armor itself, you should always have a barrier. You should never not have one. Then we're taking one point to inner flames into devouring blaze for even more crit chance. And then when they're immobilized, we go up to 30% crit chance or increased multiplicative crit chance or crit, crit damage, excuse me. This is really, really easy to do. We immobilize enemies in two ways, which is going to be like our Frost Nova as well as our Remnants of the Infinite. Next, we're going to come down and grab our ultimate skills, which is just going to be Inferno. This is really good because it just pulls everybody in. We can freeze them. Uh, Remnant teleport, groups them all up, makes it really, really easy for our Frozen Orb to destroy them. Next, we're taking every Frost skill that we can. Permafrost for more damage. Icy Touch for more damage. Frigid Breeze for... Um, chance to um, when we're doing cold damage against vulnerable enemies we can generate even more mana so that way we can spam 
and then Horror Frost here for even more damage. Then, of course, down in our key passives, we are taking Avalanche. The reason that I've opted for Avalanche over Shatter is because I like the lucky hit chance to be able to not only cast a Frozen Orb for free, but we get to do 40% multiplicative increased damage, and then the chances double to 20% against a vulnerable enemy. So 40% is very, very good, especially against single target. However, I will mention that Shatter is, is fine. It is definitely fine. You can definitely do it. This is actually better against uh, bigger mobs because after Freeze expires, the enemies explode. Um, if we explode for 25% of the damage, we dealt to them while they were frozen. I like Avalanche much better, but you can definitely use Shatter. So now let's go over to the gear pieces because that's what everybody is ready to see. So, of course, we're doing God Slayers. This is really going to help us with um, stunning and freezing an elite or a boss. We pull all the enemies in and do way more damage. And then, of course, remnants as we teleport. Pull them all in. Stun them. Awesome. Even more damage. In our gloves, we are rocking conceited. We deal increased damage. While we have a barrier active, this is always going to happen. In our pants, we're doing Tabalt's Will. While we are unstoppable, which is going to be always... We are going to uh, do increased damage. And then more importantly, we, when, we, when we become unstoppable, we gain 50 primary. This pairs very, very well with Ghost Walkers. Um, because while we're unstoppable, we get the increased move speed. So we're incredibly fast. And this is also going to pair well with Metamorphose, our Vampiric Power. Next, we have uh, Frozen Orbit. This is the main uh, power of the build. Frozen Orbit stays in place after reaching its destination and explodes twice. So as you can see here... If we can move, it's going to stay in place and explode two times. Boom, just adds even more damage. Phenomenal. In our amulet, we're doing control. You deal increased damage to immobilize, stun, or frozen. Again, we teleport in their throat, they're stunned. We freeze in their stun. Super easy to do. And then prodigies, this is really just going to help us keep our uh, mana full. And then uh, blue rose, which is the main one here. On a lucky hit... Damaging an enemy has up to a 30% chance to form an exploding ice bite, dealing cold damage. Now, this um, you triple this chance if the enemy is frozen. Now, what people don't understand about Blue Rose, or if you don't know, the ice bite cold damage scales with the rest of your cold damage. So, the more cold damage that you can do, the higher that this number is when the ice spikes explode. So, if we just freeze... And we explode for all that damage. It makes it really, really easy to kill enemies, especially elites. Last but not least, we're doing um, Dreamcatcher for Frozen. We have the Avalanche key passive. Now applies one additional cast. Which, if you guys don't remember, we are doing Avalanche. Which is when we do this, we can cast two for free with the increased damage. It's just very, very good. Uh, let's see if we can get it to trigger here so you guys can see. I don't know if it's going to proc here, but you'll see it. It'll highlight your item here. See how it's highlighted? When it's highlighted, that means we get to cast it for free. And then we get to do it a second time because of our key passive. Because of this skill, we get to cast two of them for free, which really helps us on our mana. So that is the gear, guys. Now, a few changes that you can make. If you don't have God Slayer or Remnants, you can run Disobedience here with increased cooldown and armor. And then you can also run something like Snow Veiled, which is very, very strong because then when you cast Ice Armor, you become unstoppable and then you get the 30% increased armor. I actually really, really like this one because then you can really see how much your armor actually goes up when you cast. It goes up a nice little amount. Remember 80% or 85% is your max. So this is a really, really good strong ability to have when you swap out. Again, on Tabalt's Will, if you don't have it, you could swap in for just really good pants. Um, with damage reduction, and then you could put in something like um, Snow Veiled or like Misery to increase crowd control. Something like that is very, very good. Um, so those are some swaps if you don't have these uniques. All right. Now into our Vampiric Powers, we are, um, these are just non-swappable, guys. I do not suggest swapping any of these. So you have a Curse Touch to apply um, a Curse, which pairs well with Prey on the Weak, which when an enemy is cursed... They become vulnerable. So this is really easy to see when you dash or when you're triggering. Because when they become vulnerable, you know 100% that they have a curse. You can see it with this little um, 
symbol here. I know that's hard to see when you're, you know, fighting a large mob, but that is a symbol to know that you have a curse on them. These two also pair well with Metamorphose because when we evade through enemies, we're going to cause a curse. Very, very easy. And because of our boots having plus three evade charges, we get to evade four times, which is really easy just to apply the curse. Uh, next, we have Ravenous. On the lucky hit, we increase our attack speed by 40% of our move speed, which the current bonus is 58%. So being able to just spam and deal as much damage as possible, Ravenous is really good. And then last but not least is Domination. This is essentially control all over again. We deal increased damage to enemies that are stunned, immobilized, or frozen, or feared. And then if they're injured and not an elite, they die instantly. This just really helps us kill a lot of mobs very quickly and just speed through um, a lot of the Nightmare Dungeons, especially 50s and 60s. Um, I wouldn't suggest pushing any like super high, but you can do 70s, close to 80s, as long as you have the Blue Rose. So that is the Vampiric Powers. Let's go over the Paragon board, guys. I'm not going to go into great detail in these because there's a lot to kind of unpack, but I am going to give you my glyphs, and then you can see everything down in the link below for the Mobilitics. So you can see the full written build guide there. So we are doing control. This is mandatory for the build. This is going to give us increased damage to all of our um, crowd-controlled enemies and even more damage against chilled and slowed. Everything is always going to be chilled and slowed, so it's super. This is automatic. Next, we're doing destruction for increased crit damage. Next, we're doing reinforce. So while we have a barrier, we get damage reduction. And then also reinforce is going to give us some more damage to chilled and more dex and uh, willpower. Super strong here. Um, I really like reinforce. It's very good. We got flame feeder, of course, because everything is burning from our firebolt enchantment slot. So we deal increased damage across the board to burning targets. And then uh, let's see. Last but not least is unleashed. So after spending 50 mana, which is about two casts of Frozen Orb, we deal increased damage and we gain increased mana regeneration. So I'll show you the glyph here. Um, or excuse me, that's not the glyph. Where is it? It's up here, I think. Destruction. No, it's this one. So we gain almost 7% increased multiplicative damage as well as 7% increased mana regen. It's absolutely insane. Uh, uh, Bamboo with the sub. I really do appreciate it with Prime Gaming. Thank you guys so much. Really do appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And the follow. Thank you so much. Welcome to the stream. So those are our glyphs, guys. The Paragon board can be swapped out a lot. The two nodes that you're definitely going to need is Icefall for even more damage as well as Frigid Fate for even more damage. Okay? So the link to this will be down in the description below. But yeah, guys, that is Frozen Orb. It is definitely something different that you guys can play and it's it's actually a lot of fun um it's just something different if you guys don't want to play ball lightning or you don't want to play you know ice shards and you don't want to play like chain lightning for example this is just something that i think is really really cool to play differently uh and i gotta give a big shout out to demon muppets in my community for uh kind of putting the shell of this together we got a really great community over here on twitch and in my discord so Playing oddball builds and just bringing more build diversity to the channel as well as just the community is really great. I know I've played Ball Lightning already and I will be final swapping back to that as soon as we're done. Because Ball Lightning's arguably the best or second best build in the game. But it's cool to have other builds and build diversity in Diablo 4. Just something else that you can do all content in as well as end game stuff. Okay, so like the video, comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe, and as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.